Milwaukee's rivers are filled to the brim with stories. If you've been on this very spot 300 years ago, you might have heard drums from a nearby Indian village. 200 years ago, you'd be right across the river from Solomon Juno's fur trading post. And 100 years ago, you'd be looking out over an open sewer. Our rivers have come back from that historic low point, but not all the way back. Beneath the shimmering surface of today's streams lie several feet of toxic sediment left there by our ancestors. It's a threat to our health, a killer of aquatic life, and an aesthetic disaster, but it need not be there forever. Milwaukee is poised to launch the biggest cleanup effort in Great Lakes history. Our rivers are filled with stories. This one's about flagrant abuse and the promise of redemption. Milwaukee's rivers once ran free and clear. Their water was so clean you could drink it, and so pure you could see the bottom at a depth of 18 feet. That water was an essential resource for the first Milwaukeeans. Local rivers provided wild rice for their pots, highways for their canoes, and an abundance of fish and waterfowl. There were once seven villages within two miles of today's downtown, all close by a stream. No wonder the early residents called their home Milwaukee, the native term for good land. White settlers were just as dependent on water, but for vastly different reasons. What they saw on Milwaukee was the best natural harbor on the western shore of Lake Michigan, and they wasted no time improving it. The rivers were dredged and docked, the port entrance was set in stone, and the current was put to sleep. New settlers came in by the thousands, and farm products went out by the ton. In the early 1860s, Milwaukee was the largest shipper of wheat on earth. The early whites also looked to the rivers for water power. Like hyperactive beavers, they dammed the streams and put them to work. Sawing lumber, grinding flour, and making everything from paper to textiles. The next step was even heavier industry. In the late 1800s, Milwaukee became the self-proclaimed machine shop of the world. Local factories, many built on rivers, made steam engines and sawmills, tractors and turbines, cranes and car frames, mine hoists and motorcycles, not to mention meat, leather and beer. With all that activity, Milwaukee's rivers went downhill in a hurry. By 1900, the city had nearly 300,000 residents and more than 300 miles of sewers. Their sole job was to carry human, animal, and industrial waste mixed with stormwater to the nearest river. There it sat stinking to high heaven. As early as 1881, the Milwaukee River was described as a currentless and yellowish murky stream with water like oil and an odor combined of the effluvia of a hundred sewers. Its sister streams were every bit as degraded. The Menominee, for instance, was panned as a river of death, disgusting in the extreme to the sight and fearfully offensive to the olfactories. The raw sewage eventually decayed, taking all aquatic life with it. The industrial pollutants were another story entirely. Local firms dumped tons of heavy metals, oil and grease, coal tar, PCBs, PHAs, and even hide scrapings into our waters. It all settled to the bottom, and it's still here. This toxic legacy made Milwaukee a member of a sadly exclusive club. In 1987, the United States and Canada identified 43 areas of concern on the Great Lakes pollution hotspots that require special attention. The AOC club is one that nobody wants to join. Several cities have improved their waters enough to quit. Milwaukee wants to be next. Some important steps have already been taken in that direction. Matching federal grants with local dollars, Milwaukee has dredged contaminated sediment, removed dams, reforested open land, and turned concrete channels into rivers again. 
As important as they are, each of these projects has solved a highly specific problem in a highly specific location. The proposed next step is the big one. The Environmental Protection Agency has made Milwaukee one of 10 priority AOCs on the Great Lakes, which could open the door to 65% federal funding for a massive cleanup. The goal is to remove the toxic sediment from every inch of the river bottoms in central Milwaukee, and to do it by 2024. The effort would cover nearly 12 miles and cost in excess of $200 million. Nothing like it has ever been attempted on the Great Lakes. It would be the biggest single cleanup on the fastest timeline with the largest team of partners in the region's history. Everyone from City Hall to the Wisconsin Capitol to Washington, D.C. is involved. The EPA has already agreed to fund most of the preliminary work. The hope is that the entire job can be finished with the same mix of federal and local dollars. The cleanup would involve two major steps. Powerful vacuum hoses would suck the polluted muck from the riverbeds, a process used with great success in Wisconsin's Fox River and other hotspots. Most of the waste, 1.7 million cubic yards of it, would be piped directly to a highly engineered disposal site on the east side of Jones Island. Milwaukee's rivers are cleaner today. With tighter controls on pollution, the beaver have come back. The sturgeon have returned, and so have the people. Whether they're buying full-time homes or spending a night on the town, our rivers have become the places to be. But lurking beneath the water is a toxic legacy that must be removed before Milwaukee can enjoy its waterways with complete safety. It's not a legacy we asked for. It's not a problem we caused, but here it is anyway. And with that problem comes a great opportunity. Ours can be the first generation in Milwaukee's history to leave our rivers in better shape than we found them for all the generations still to come.